now we're about to celebrate Christmas. That's right. We do celebrate Christmas. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so now, uh, along with Christmas celebrations, uh, comes this story at ToddStarns.com. ToddStarns.com. The story title is Professor Says God Did Not Get Mary's Consent. Wait a minute. Well, I'm sure you've heard that before. But this guy, he is a professor at Minnesota State University, Mankato, and he's accused Almighty God of sexually assaulting Mary. This is what yeah. uh, <laughs> the language being used at ToddStarns.com. He said on his Twitter feed, Carl, he said, quote, The virgin birth story is about an all-knowing, all-powerful deity impregnating a human teen. There is no definition of consent that would include that scenario. Happy holidays is what he says. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you go back and look at this culturally, Mary was already uh, engaged to a man, and at her age, probably around 14, uh, she was considered a young woman. I mean, that, culturally, yes. that's, that's yeah. considered a young woman. Well, and the, and, uh, the life so. expectancy was about 50, so uh, 14, 15, 16, they would begin to be married, and and, and, and the families uh, were all in favor of it, yeah. Yeah, and Starnes reports that Sprankle, who teaches psychology at the taxpayer-funded school, I don't know why he threw that in there. I mean, what's wrong with taxpayer-funded school? <laughs> uh, is, also, is, is he a school elitist, Todd Starnes? He must be a school elitist, right, to throw that in there, but... Uh, uh, he's also a sex therapist. Clearly, he is not a uh, theologian. So, my gosh. Uh, now, Dr. Robert Jeffress was interviewed by Todd Starnes about this, and I think Jeffress, even though I, I have nothing but respect for him, uh, I think he falls short here, Carl, and, and I think you might agree with this. Dr. Sprankle's comments are nothing but blasphemous babble from a liberal who is completely ignorant of the Bible, said Dr. Jeffress uh, to Starnes. Jeffress, the pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas and a Fox News contributor, said the Gospel of Luke records Mary's hymn of praise, thanking God for choosing her to give birth to the Messiah, which is true. But there is a better example of this whole consent issue. Uh, Furthermore, a sovereign God doesn't need consent from any of us for anything he chooses to do, Jeffress said. Well, I mean, that's a a theological debate that we can have another day. Uh, The renowned pastor, now this is where he went off the rails, in my opinion, in my opinion. The renowned pastor warned that the professor, quote, had better pray that there is no God, because if there is, his goose is cooked on Judgment Day. (laughs) Now, I don't know. I guess we could put in a call to Pastor Jeffress and ask him to elaborate on that. That is not something I would ever say to anyone, Carl. If there is a God, his goose is cooked. I think he could have worded that a little better. What do you think? Yeah. Well, no, and you know, and if there is a God, yeah. And and listen, I know Robert Jeffers personally, and I'm sure that if he could go back and rechoose his words, he would. Those were not the best words to use sure. in a situation like that. And I agree with you. I don't want to be too judgmental on Doctor Jeffers because I too, I'm not at the same uh, status that he is, but I too am on uh, radio and television and radio interviews and. In the media a lot and a lot of it's just speaking publicly and extemporaneously and sometimes afterwards i think you know what i could have said that better <laughs> and i beat myself up for days so right. he, he might be beating himself up here but anyway so anyway you you finish what you want to say about that article and about this professor sprankle is his name and then i'd like to give the theological truth of the matter yeah Absolutely. Well, uh, now they interviewed, uh, Starnes interviewed a Dr. Emir Kaner, and he did a better job here. Uh, he, the, he's the president of Truett McCall University, uh, said he was not terribly surprised by, by Sprankle's offensive comments. He says, it comes as no surprise that a radical leftist professor with little knowledge of the scripture would make such an imbecilic statement. Welcome to the modern university system where statements easily demonstrated as false are now mainstream. Well, let's go ahead and easily demonstrate this as false, Carl, because a, even a superficial overview of Luke 1 reveals that, yes, indeed, there was consent, yes. full, yeah. uh, fully informed consent, because, you know, the angel comes to uh, Mary and tells her what's going to happen. The, uh, the, you know, he gives her the message, basically, uh, and don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and and um, and you'll conceive in your womb, and you and, and uh, his name will be Jesus. He will be great. He'll be called the Son of the Highest, and and the Lord will give him the throne of David. 
uh, and Mary questions him, asks him a question, how can this be, since I don't know a man, I'm a virgin? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, he talks about how Elizabeth is pregnant, and, uh, and, then, and then the angel leaves. Is that right? Is that yes. true? Does well, the no, no, there's something. The no, no, no. no. Verse 38. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The angel sticks around, right? The angel's sticking around. Why? The angel's already given the message. Why is the angel still standing there, Carl? Waiting, waiting for the for consent. Something, isn't he? Waiting for consent. Right. <laughs> because she could have said, no, I'm not. I, no, I do not want that. Exactly. I do not want to be a part of this. But, but, but rather, right. she's, what did she say? She says, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from yeah, her. Yeah. So the angel and, was standing there. We, we, don't know, we don't know his posture. Maybe he was stand, okay, standing there like with his hands crossed, maybe thinking, okay, I'm not leaving until I get an answer. Yeah, maybe. And, yeah, maybe he looked at her with his palms lifted up, kind of where you would say, okay, so what's your answer? What, what, what are you going to say? What's it going to be? Yeah, sister? what's it going to be? You know, I mean, I'm not going to kill you if you don't do this, but I mean, but God is true. But see, here's the thing. He didn't just show up and say, this is going to happen. But he said, Mary, you have found favor with God. You, right. you, are, right. you are an unbelievable young woman. You're a God-fearing, godly young woman. And, and the Lord God wants to bless you of all the women on the earth forever and ever. You will be remembered for bringing forth the promised seed that will crush the head of the serpent, the prophecy of Messiah. You would be the one. You know, and she said, well, how can this be? Because I've never known a man. In other words, she's asking is anything sexual involved in this? Because I'm, you know, I'm a spouse to be married, and and I've never known a man. This this can't be. But the and here's the thing I want folks to know because that perverted professor, in my opinion, speaks of well, you know, she was put upon and sexually assaulted, and it, there's nothing that no one had sex yeah. with Mary. This is God. He right. speaks things into existence. He says, "Let there be light, right. and there's light. Let there be the sun, and there's the sun. Let." There there be the moon and there's the moon let there be living creatures over the face of the earth and there is and so he speaks into her womb with her permission nothing sexual happens at all god he, no. he, he is outside of the universe he is other than he is omnipotent all powerful he speaks it and it happens there was nothing sexual that happened to mary at all her womb he the the permission was asked if you will first he was said do not fear do not be afraid mary this is something amazing right. that god wants you to participate in with him and like you said then after the angel told him how everything he answered her questions he told her how everything would happen right. and then once she heard she said Hey, you're right. I am the Lord's servant, so may your word be fulfilled in me. Then the angel left her. The angel didn't have relationships with her. The Holy Spirit didn't have relationships with her. God didn't have – nothing is said about that. It's just God says, from your womb there will come a child, the promised seed that will eventually destroy Satan himself. I will speak it into your womb. And Mary said, do it. Right, right. And, and of course, you know, the angel through God would have known that, that there was a certain foreknowledge that, yes, of course, she would agree to this. But, and this is where Jeffers falls short again, is that consent, I believe, is required for almost everything that God does to us personally, I believe, I, I personally. Mean, yeah. You I, know, I, we're, we're, I mean, I mean we're saved by the blood of the Lamb and the yeah. word of our testimony. Yeah, well, you know, and, and theologians have debated that, and I tend to agree with you that, by and large, for the most part, I mean, God does not just just manipulate and, and, and make us do what we refuse to do. Um, however, he is sovereign, and so he can work with what attitude is already within us, like when he says he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Okay, but then you read about what Pharaoh was. His heart was already completely demonic, and so God just removed his right. hand from him and said, okay, I'll use that for my, right. glo for my glory. 
And so the same thing with the Apostle Paul. He was on his way to kill Christians. Now, God didn't make him, but the resurrected Christ appeared to him, and Paul was put in this this state for three days of not being able to see. He was led around by the hands. He had to think. It, God sent a, a minister to him for three days to explain to him everything that was happening. And at that point, Paul could have still said, no, I don't, I, I'm not going to do this. But he didn't. Paul said, be it unto me. I, I get it. I see what's going right. on. Yeah. Yeah, God does have a way of making offers that that are difficult to refuse. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> you know when I when I was when I was visiting Brandon at Redeemed Ministries, I was surrounded by men who, yes, were being delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's all being done by their own consent. They had to first admit that yes, I have a problem. Yes, I need help, and at this point, I, I can only see that my help ha- must come from the Lord. Must come from, the, come Lord. from the Lord. That's right. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you for bringing this article to our attention, and I know. Some would be listening and say, well, we shouldn't even give that even any thought. No, but we should, because this is the kind of blasphemy and filth that is filling this world now, because it's demonic, the demonic outpouring of, of the last days the Bible speaks of, uh, the, the apostasy, uh, the, the people that will believe lies, truth will be thrown to the ground, the word of God will be absolutely uh, slandered and blasphemed, and here's an example of it. And Pastor Robert Jeffers stepped in and kind of spanked the guy's rear end a little bit, but Dr. Sprankle starts it off, the first sentence, Professor Minnesota's uh, Minnesota so State University, Dr. Sprankle, has accused Almighty God of sexually assaulting Mary. I mean, how blasphemous and unbiblical, and, and what a lie. And so we had to address this, and I'm glad we did. Thank you for well, bringing it to us. we had to. I mean, it, it, it wasn't Edmund Burke who said, evil can only prosper if good men are silent. That's right. So you and I are good men. We're not going to be silent. There we go. <laughs> I guess we are, Carl. That's it. That's <laughs> it. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to go to uh, this For thousands of years, mankind has debated how creation began. Ancient texts tell us the story. But today, the real message behind the pivotal account of the Garden of Eden has been obfuscated and lost. That is, until now. World-renowned author Carl Gallops digs up the hidden truths from the book of Genesis to finally give back the knowledge that was lost to the world. Find out what really happened in the Garden of Eden, what Jesus taught about Eden on the cross, and how the conflict between Jesus and the gods of antiquity is about to erupt on planet Earth, fulfilling biblical prophecy. In the new book, Gods of Ground Zero, this explains everything.